Okay, I'm just putting this video together to show um, this smoker that I made to smoke the intake of my Altima. I've been having a leak for a while, a P1273, supposed to be a lean cold leak. And I don't know, I don't understand how to get this uh, cold to go away because the car runs flawless. My fuel trims are great. Checked everything else. Um, I got pretty decent compression on all the cylinders except for number two. Two is like at 179, everything else is 185. And that's great for this engine because they recommend 150. But anyway, um, leak down test is great. And I'm just trying to narrow it down. But I've always needed a smoke machine to see if I can smoke the intake and find out if there's any kind of vacuum leaks anywhere since it is showing a lean code. So what I did is I went online, found a couple of YouTube videos of guys putting different ones together, everything from cigars, cheap ways to do it. I did a pretty decent way because I wanted something that I can kind of believe that would work a little bit better. So this is what I came up with. And basically it's the same as a lot of guys online. But um, like I said, I used, um, Got the, I had the wire laying around from some old jumpers that I used on an old voltmeter that I never really cared too much about. So I took the little orange, the little red clips here and put them on here with bolts. I got these uh, ceiling washers on one side. Plus, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a grommet that I got from Harbor Freight, a kit of grommets. So that's the first washer that you might see right there. And then I got the ceiling washers on the outside of that. So you see the two rubber pieces there. The grommets are great because once you drill a hole, the grommets actually go from the inside to the outside. So it actually completely seals off or um, stops the, uh, the bolt from touching the metal can completely. So you don't have to worry about the can itself getting or being energized or hot. So that goes into there. And as you see on the other side, it comes out and then I have a nut with the wire. Now this is what you use for the smoker. This is um, four pieces of tiki wicks, you know, replacement tiki wicks that you put in those tiki lamps. I wrapped uh, four of them together. I don't know if you can see at the bottom, but one, it's actually three. Two that I left long, long enough that each end would actually extend down into the can and touch the bottom to wick up the, the fluid at the bottom. See those other two over there, and then the other two, I, the other one I cut in half just to make the whole um, assembly thing there wrapped up nice and thick, so it wasn't so skinny. So that's actually three pieces of tiki wick material, and then I have 20 gauge uh, resistance wire. I forgot what they call it, but it's a resistance wire, not the cathode wire. Uh, I'll look at the the uh, packaging. I wrapped that around. Now I measured that wire with my volt ohm meter to 2 ohms. Because that's what a lot of guys online, they were trying to get around 2 amps. So since I'm putting, this is going to be connected to the car battery, which is 12 volts. So if the wire resistance is 2 ohms, that would give me roughly 6 amps running through the wire. Which, from what I'm finding, this is the first time I put it together. I didn't even try any other experiments. And the thing was putting out so much smoke, I was amazed. So I, I won't even touch anything. Everything is adjusted perfect. But once again, you can see, I'm losing focus here. The bolt on the other side, and that's coming out to the negative side. Same deal. The two washers, one is the ceiling washer, which is the washer with the rubber um, material made onto it. And then the second one touching the can is actually the grommet, which stops the bolt from touching the can. I'll show you that in a second. Then I put some heat shrink around the little uh, eyelet connectors. It comes out, bought a little bit of this, uh, whatever you call this stuff, I don't know. And I put two um, alligator clips on here to connect it to the battery, which holds real tight. So that is actually what energizes this wire that's basically a resistor, because if you didn't have that wire there as a load, then you would basically be shorting out your battery when you connect those two leads. But that acts as the load, and since it's two ohms, you do a uh, ohms law, that's two, six amps going through that wire. So it's a draw of six amps. So, um, you know, it's, it turns the 
I had it running for about 10 minutes so far, five, minute at, five minutes at a time, and that's what you see there. Then, to finish it off, it's air, because once you uh, heat that smoke up, you want to find a way of getting that smoke out. It'll actually leak out on its own, but you want to push it into your intake under pressure, and they tell you not to use more than one or two PSIs. Actually, if I use more than that, it actually blows this lid off. This is the lid, same kind of deal with the ceiling washer on both sides. And I got a bar connected that I just screwed it through. I didn't even put a nut on it, and it holds the pressure fine. I'm surprised. But it's a tight fit. I made sure that I measured the ceiling washers to be to go in there, and it took a little bit of force to get this to screw in. But I only did that because I wanted to be able to have a tight fit where I wouldn't have to use a nut. And that's exactly what happened. So this just seals on the top like that. The smoke comes out of the pipe, and then I'll find some way to put an adapter here, maybe from my uh, MIDI vac. has a little adapter so I can plug this into a vacuum line, any kind of vacuum line on the engine to, to induce the smoke into the intake. And I'll be able to find if I have any type of uh, intake leaks. And basically with an intake leak on a car like this, this is my mass airflow sensor right here. So what is, the code is really saying is that the air that's coming past that mass air, the computer is adjusting and it's giving you the correct amount of fuel air ratio or fuel through the fuel injectors to give you a ratio of 14.7 to 1, which would be perfect. But if air is getting in from other, some other source and it's not being metered by the, air, uh, the AFR right there, then the engine or the computer doesn't know that there's more air being added so it's still adding the same amount of fuel and thus you're running lean because now you have more fuel being added to the engine with the same amount of gas that the computer thinks it needs so i'm assuming that's the whole deal and that air has to be coming into the engine somewhere along this path somewhere on the intake going into the engine the engine is actually sucking in more air than the mass air florida is telling it that it's supposed to have so the fuel injectors are not adding enough fuel and my um, O2 sensor or this one is actually an AFR sensor is reading it and my fuel trims which is kind of weird to me because my fuel trims don't seem off you would think that my fuel trims would be reading the engine is running lean and would be adding fuel I would have high numbers on my long term and short term readings but I don't I'm running around zero no more on my short term no more than two or three plus two or three and, and long term is at 0 0.8 most of the time so I, I don't understand but like I said the, at least with the smoke machine it'll help me narrow it down so um, let me put everything together and show you the smoke in action